Writing, humanity's greatest invention. But how did this technology come about? What did it mean for humankind? Some postulate the invention of writing was a sudden leap forward and the precursor for advanced thought. More accurately, writing was the result of an evolutionary process intertwined with the tools, language, culture, economy, and technologies of a civilization. And nowhere is this clearer than in the story of the earliest form of writing, cuneiform. Cuneiform was invented in Sumeria, an ancient Mesopotamian civilization that arose in the fertile alluvial plains between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Around 8500 BCE, nomads settled the area, domesticated livestock, and established a village-based agrarian society. Arriving in the 4th millennium BCE, Sumerians began forming small city-states by purchasing land and conquering locals. Irrigation systems developed, agricultural production intensified, creating surpluses. People began pursuing commerce, administration, and religion. The land produced clay and agricultural goods, but not wood, metal, and stone, necessitating trade and spurring inventions such as the wheel and the trade ship. Religion dominated Sumerian life. The ziggurat, a massive temple, formed the religious and government center. By the 3rd millennium BCE, Sumerian civilization consisted of a highly stratified society of independent religion-based city-states led by a priest, king, and council of elders. Shipping trade and agriculture dominated the economy. It was against this backdrop the first writing system emerged. Interestingly, the first writing system emerged encased in an accounting system. Around 8000 BCE, Mesopotamians began using shape tokens for accounting. Each shape represented a different commodity and its measure. A sphere symbolized a sack of grain, a cylinder an animal, and so forth. These tokens were paired with distinctive seals decorated with animal and geometric shapes to represent individuals. Farmers and tradesmen could track transactions, debts, pledges, and contracts. This system remained stable until the dominance of the Sumerian city-states around 3500 BCE. With up to 10,000 people in a single city, monitoring tax payments and trade contracts became complicated. Sumerian writing began changing rapidly. Pictographs appeared on tokens, representing a wider variety of goods. In addition, symbols representing numbers were created, starting the first accounting system. Around 3200, Sumerians devised small clay envelopes impressed with seals to hold tokens. The abundance of clay, easy processing, and lack of other materials made it an ideal writing surface. The envelopes allowed traders to record agreements, prevent fraud, and enabled office administrators to maintain accounts. Unfortunately, if one forgot the envelope's contents, it had to be broken to retrieve the tokens. This problem was quickly solved as Sumerians began impressing the tokens on the envelope's front. These negative impressions were the first sign of writing. Small clay tablets quickly replaced envelopes, though they initially mimicked the envelope's design. They were used exclusively for accounting purposes. Tablet layout was uniform from Uruk up through Syria, demonstrating communication between scribes across the region. Mesopotamian cultural tendency for symmetry influenced the writing space for millennia. In art, mirrored images were common. On tokens, pictographs were organized in symmetric sets. This translated onto tablets, where scribes arranged impressions in lines, centered in the middle of the long side of a tablet. As tablet size increased, more pictographs were added. Around 3100 BCE, more complicated pictographs developed representing the greater diversity in trade goods. Pictographs were carved slowly using curved bone points. This was the start of pictographic script. At this point, writing was primarily used to recall lists of objects. Reading involved making connections between pictures and the objects they represented. Around 3000, someone realized pictographs could also represent sounds. In Sumerian, words were monosyllabic, so every word could be depicted. This led to a proliferation of pictographs. To complicate matters, a single pictograph could have multiple meanings. A foot could mean stand, walk, run, or foot. Meaning had to be construed from context. Pictographs were also not standardized, resulting in numerous symbols for one object. At one point, there were over 30 pictographs for sheep. Sumerians also began incorporating words from other regional languages. The pictographic system expanded to over a thousand symbols. 
Reading and writing were extremely complicated, as visual recognition had to be combined with recall, contextuality, and auto recognition, meaning that the majority of the population remained illiterate. Surprisingly, the invention of a triangular reed stylus solved many of these problems. When pressed into clay, the stylus produced uniform wedged shapes. Characters looked more abstract than pictographs, forcing character stabilization. Symbols were created to indicate parts of speech, syllabic and phonetic sounds, minimizing ambiguities for readers and writers. A standardized writing system containing several hundred symbols emerged. This was the birth of cuneiform, the earliest known writing system. As city-states unified under a single king, an efficient writing system facilitated the centralization of administration because more information was recordable. Temple warehouses and special tablet shelves were created to store text short-term since no organization system for permanent retrieval was ever developed. The ability to read and write became a requirement for bureaucrats. However, society remained largely oral and illiterate given the complexity of the writing systems. Thus, bureaucrats drove society. By 3100, there was a deeply entrenched scribal class. Scribing was a hereditary occupation. All work connected to government or religious life. Initially, scribes recorded contracts and tax payments, but eventually they perpetuated the religious ideology and political propaganda of the Sumerian city-state and Mesopotamian kings. Around 2800 BCE, scribes began moving beyond the economic sphere, creating religious texts such as hymns, prayers, and documents supporting the king's religious right to rule. They also began recording legal decisions. As the role of scribes evolved, they also began creating literary texts such as songs and poems. Many of these were written versions of oral literature. Texts from 3000 to 2600 BCE show a vast movement to produce literature. After 2600, scribes adopted a mix-remix attitude where texts from different cultures and times were reformulated until they became standardized around the turn of the millennium. Around 2100 came the Golden Age of Sumerian Literacy. Several of these mix-remix stories became the famous tales of Noah and Gilgamesh. Medical texts were also written. A legal code based on recorded legal decisions was also developed, enabling the stabilization of society. To perform various administrative, religious, and literary roles, the scribal class became highly stratified. Only elite scribes could create literary and religious works. Lower level scribes worked as notaries, copyists, accountants, and public scribes. Teaching scribes to read and write and determining their skill level required a system to transmit and measure knowledge. In other words, an educational system and a curriculum. The Sumerian educational system is significant not only for laying the foundation for other learning systems, but because it demonstrates Sumerians analyzed how to transmit language and what constituted successful teaching practice. Sumerians recognized teaching a language meant mastering it, and mastery means understanding how different components fit together. Students, 10 years old, attended schools in tablet houses for years. These were the homes of an elite scribe or part of the temple. In the first stage of the curriculum, teachers wrote word lists on one side of the tablet, which students then recited and copied. Student word lists were categorized or phonetically based, aiding the development of semantic meaning, vocabulary, memory, and metacognitive skills. Sumerians recognized learning to read needs to start orally. The brain needs to make contextual audiovisual connections. This means 5,000 years before teachers debated whether reading and writing was best taught through meaning or phonetic methods, Sumerians were doing both. The Sumerian educational system divided learning into two stages, demonstrating Sumerians understood concepts akin to zones of proximal development or Piaget's stages of development. By the end of the second stage, students mastered mathematics, vocation-related vocabulary, and needed to recall, sequence, compose, write, or recite vast amounts of literature and religious texts. After 1750, 
Sumerian was no longer spoken, so students had to translate the meaning of words into Sumerian and their own language. Literacy now meant students had to have rich contextual knowledge base, recognition skills, and the cognitive flexibility to determine if a written word had a logographic, syllabic, or phonetic meaning. The Sumerians also realized learning required discipline, to students' chagrin. Many student texts end, and then he caned me. Educational texts in Sumeria and later Mesopotamia were standardized, comprising a curriculum. The oral religious emphasis reflected this focus in Mesopotamian culture and the scribes' role as the containers and perpetuators of that knowledge. Cuneiform continued to exist for the next 3,000 years. However, Sumerian as a spoken language died out once Sumeria was conquered. Cuneiform continued because of its ideographic and syllabic nature. Easily transmitted across cultures, it was used for international diplomacy as far away as Egypt and throughout the Babylonian Empire. Evidence from Babylonia and the Syrian Kingdom of Ebla demonstrates that each society adapted cuneiform for their own administrative and religious needs. But that is a documentary for another day. And so, the story of cuneiform is the story of the evolution of a pictographic system to a syllabic one, from an accounting system to a literary one, from an oral to a written and classical language. It is the story of a system that influenced and was influenced by the society and culture that birthed it.